Hello everyone, my name is Iman. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be finishing our lecture on acid-base chemistry and we've made it to the fourth objective. In this fourth objective, we're going to talk about salt solutions and salt formation. A salt is any ionic compound that forms when an acid reacts with a base. When salts dissolve in water, they dissociate into their respective ions, and this makes them strong electrolytes. However, not all salts dissolve in water to the same extent. This variability makes it important to be able to predict a salt's solubility in water. We can classify salts as either soluble or insoluble based on their ionic composition. Let's start with soluble ionic compounds. Group 1 cations, like lithium, sodium, potassium, and cesium, they are always soluble. The ammonium ion always makes salts soluble in water. Compounds containing nitrate, acetate, and perchlorate, they're always soluble as well. Halides, like chloride, bromide, and iodide, they're generally soluble, except when they're combined with silver, lead, copper, or mercury. Sulfates are also mostly soluble, except when paired with calcium, strontium, barium, silver, or lead. What about insoluble ionic compounds? Metal hydroxides are generally insoluble, except for those containing group one metals and the larger group two metals like calcium, strontium, and barium. Carbonates and phosphates are insoluble, except when paired with group one metals or ammonia. And sulfides are typically insoluble, except when combined with group one or two metals and ammonia. Like we said earlier, Acids and bases can react with one another to form salts, and this process is often called neutralization. In a neutralization reaction, the hydrogen ions from the acid react with the hydroxide ions from the base to form water, while the remaining ions combine to form the salt. So again, to repeat, a neutralization reaction is a chemical reaction in which an acid and a base react to form a salt and water. The general form of a neutralization reaction is shown here. Here's our acid, here's our base. They react together to form a salt and water. Now there are four possible combinations of acids and bases in neutralization reactions, each with a different outcome. We can have a strong acid with a strong base, we can have a strong acid with a weak base. We can have a weak acid with a strong base. Or we can have a weak acid and a weak base. Let's elaborate on each one, starting with the strong acid with a strong base. In a reaction between a strong acid and a strong base, the strong electrolytes completely dissociate into their ions. So the net ionic equation for a strong acid with a strong base demonstrates the formation of water from hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. And this results in a neutral solution with a pH of seven since the acid and base completely neutralize each other. Now this would make more sense if we consider an example. So we're gonna work with the reaction of hydrochloric acid with sodium hydroxide. That's shown here, the products are sodium chloride, which is a salt, and water. Now, if we were to write the total ionic equation, we need to understand that both the strong acid and the strong base completely dissociate in water. So we would write hydrogen cations plus chloride anions, for hydrochloric acid, and we would write sodium cations and hydroxide anions for sodium hydroxide. And then for sodium chloride, we would write sodium cations and chloride anions, and then water, of course. What we notice is sodium cations and chloride anions, they both appear on the reactant side and the product side. So they are spectator ions that do not participate in the reaction. 
what we're left with is the reaction of hydrogen cations and hydroxide anions to form water. So for a strong acid with a strong base, the net ionic equation is the formation of water from hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions, and this results in a neutral solution with a pH of 7. What about the reaction of a strong acid and a weak base? In a reaction between a strong acid and a weak base, the strong acid completely dissociates, while the weak base reacts partially with the hydrogen ions to form a salt. The net ionic equation highlights the formation of the conjugate acid of the weak base, and the resulting solution is generally slightly acidic due to the hydrolysis of the conjugate acid. So we can better understand this with an example. We're going to consider the reaction of hydrochloric acid and ammonia. And the reaction is shown here. The product is ammonium chloride. Now, if we want to write the total ionic equation for this reaction, we have to keep in mind that hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. It's going to dissociate in solution into its hydrogen cations and chloride anions. Ammonia, however, is a weak base, and it does not fully dissociate in water, so we keep it as is. For ammonium chloride, the salt that we form, this dissociates in solution as well, so we write ammonium cations and chloride anions. And we quickly realize that we have chloride anions on both the reactant and the product side, so these are our spectator ions. Chloride ions do not participate in the reaction. What we're left with is the hydrogen cation reacts with ammonia to form ammonium cation. And this resulting solution is slightly acidic because the ammonium ion can undergo hydrolysis, reacting with water to produce hydronium ions. Now, next up, we want to discuss weak acid and strong base. In a reaction between a weak acid and a strong base, the strong base completely dissociates while the weak acid reacts partially with the hydroxide ions to form salt and water. The net ionic equation demonstrates the formation of the conjugate base of the weak acid and water, and so the resulting solution is generally slightly basic due to the hydrolysis of the conjugate base. Now this is going to make more sense if we do an example. So we're going to consider the reaction of hypochlorous acid with sodium hydroxide. And that reaction is shown here where the products are sodium hypochlorite and water. Now if we were to write the total ionic equation, we should remember that sodium hydroxide is a strong base and it's going to completely dissociate in water and our salt is also going to completely dissociate in water. So we can write hypochlorous acid plus sodium cations plus hydroxide anions, and this gives us sodium cations, hypochlorite anion, and water. Now, we recognize that sodium cations appear both on the reactant side, and that means that they do not participate in the reaction because they are the spectator ion. What we're left with is hypochlorous acid plus hydroxide anions give us hypochlorite anion and water. Now the resulting solution is going to be slightly basic because the hypochlorite ion can undergo hydrolysis, reacting with water to produce hydroxide ions. Finally, we can discuss weak acid with a weak base. In a reaction with a weak acid and a weak base, both reactants partially dissociate and react to form a salt. The net ionic equation highlights the formation of the conjugate acid and base, and the pH of the resulting solution really depends on the relative strengths and extents of hydrolysis of the conjugate acid and base. And with that, we have completed objective four, and we can move into our last and final objective, which is titled molecular structure and acid-base strength.
Here, we're going to be discussing how molecular structure influences acid and base strength. And this is a critical aspect of acid-base chemistry because the ability of a molecule to donate or accept a proton depends heavily on its structure and the stability of the resulting species. We're going to start with some definitions. The term acid strength refers to how easily an acid donates a proton. A strong acid readily gives up its proton, while a weak acid holds onto it more tightly. Base strength, on the other hand, refers to how readily a base accepts a proton. A strong base is eager to accept hydrogen ions, while a weak base is less inclined to do so. Now, there are two important points that I want to make now. The first point is that the stronger an acid, the weaker its conjugate base. This means that after an acid donates a proton, the conjugate base that remains is typically less likely to accept a proton. The second point is that the strength of an acid is often determined by the stability of its conjugate base. One of the most effective ways to stabilize a conjugate base is through charge delocalization. This is the spreading out of the negative charge over a larger area of the molecule. Now, keeping these definitions and points in mind, let's begin by comparing the strength of binary acids. So we're going to start by looking at binary acids. These are acids that consist of a hydrogen and only one other element. So things like hydrochloric acid is an example. The acidity of binary acids depends on where the other element is located on the periodic table. So acidity increases as you move from left to right across a period on the periodic table. This is because atoms become more electronegative, making it easier for the hydrogen ion to dissociate. Acidity also increases as you move down a group in the periodic table. As the size of the atom increases, the bond between hydrogen and the other atoms becomes weaker, making it easier to lose the proton. So for example, in the halogen group, the acidity increases in the following order as you go down the group. So hydrochloric acid, for example, is more acidic than hydrofluoric acid, and so on and so forth. Now, this trend occurs because as you go down the halogens, for example, iodine is larger than fluorine, making the bond with hydrogen weaker and easier to break thus increasing the acid strength. Next, let's move on to oxyacids. These are acids that contain hydrogen, oxygen, and one other element, often a non-metal. Two key trends emerge when comparing the strength of oxyacids. First, for oxyacids with the same central atom, the acid strength increases as the number of oxygen atoms increases. And this is because additional oxygen atoms help stabilize the negative charge on the conjugate base through charge delocalization. The more oxygen atoms there are, the more spread out the negative charge is, making the conjugate base more stable and the acid stronger. The second point is that for oxyacids, with the same number of oxygen atoms, the acid strength increases as the electronegativity of the central atom increases. A more electronegative central atom pulls electron density away from the acidic hydrogen, weakening the bond and making it easier for the hydrogen to dissociate. Now, there's one thing I want to make mention. Be careful. Binary acids and oxyacids follow opposite trends within a group. Binary acids increase in acid strength going down the periodic table because of increasing size, like we see here in this trend. In contrast, 
oxy acids with the same number of oxygen atoms decrease in acid strength going down the periodic table because of the decreasing electronegativity, like we see in this trend here. So to sum up, the strength of an acid or base is deeply connected to its molecular structure. For binary acids, the trends on the periodic table help explain why certain acids are stronger than others. For oxy acids, both the number of oxygen atoms and the electronegativity of the central atom play a very important role in determining acid strength. And by understanding these structural factors, we can predict and explain the behavior of acids and bases in a wide range of chemical reactions. With that being said, let's hop into a quick practice problem. This example says, in each pair, determine which is stronger. Here we see our first pair. We have nitric acid and arsenous acid. Both of these acids are oxy acids, meaning that they consist of hydrogen, oxygen, and one other element. When comparing two oxy acids with the same number of oxygen atoms, acid strength increases with the electronegativity of the central atom. Nitrogen is more electronegative than arsenic, so nitric acid is a stronger acid than arsenous acid. Now for our second pair, we have ammonia and hydrogen sulfide. Now what we have here are neutral binary acids. They consist of hydrogen and one other element. The strength of these acids increases going from left to right across the periodic table and from top to bottom. Now in this example, hydrogen sulfide is further to the right and further down on the periodic table than ammonia, so it's going to be the stronger acid. And with that, we've covered all the topics we need for this chapter. I hope that this was helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns down below. Other than that, good luck, happy studying, and have a beautiful, beautiful day.